Every year, thousands of people in the U.S. die from complications related to the flu. But a few years ago, when the H1N1 strain was circulating, that number skyrocketed. More than 12,000 people died from the strain, and almost 275,000 people were hospitalized. One such patient, Danielle Abraham of Depew. As 7 Eyewitness News anchor Katie Morse tells us, had it not been for a life-saving surgery with links to the past, she never would have lived to see the next special moment her life had in store. Oh, beauty bear. Every baby is a miracle, but that title might hold a little more weight for 10-week-old Harlow and her parents, Danielle and Joe Abraham. I have a two-month-old baby that was never supposed to be a part of the equation. That's because eight years ago, Danielle was clinging to life after coming down with the H1N1 strain of the flu. In 2009, when their baby Fiona was eight months old, Danielle started getting sick. Eventually, she had trouble breathing. We packed up our eight-month-old, we dropped her off at my in-laws, and we went to Miller Suburban Emergency Room. Each day she got worse and worse, and by Thursday of that week, that was a Monday, and by Thursday they were inducing her into a coma. That's how sick she got. Danielle's doctors hoped the coma would give her lungs time to rest. It was supposed to be for just a little while. They said maybe four days, and you know, four days stretched onto a month. It stretched on to seven weeks. Instead of improving, the flu turned to pneumonia, which turned into an infection. Danielle had to be transferred to the Cleveland Clinic for specialized care. At one point, they told me she's the sixth person in the hospital. I'm like, in a Cleveland Clinic? Her lungs were actually becoming digested by the infection that initially started as the H1N1 influenza. Dr. Sadish Murthy was called in to operate on holes forming in Danielle's lungs. The only thing that worked, a new age twist on decades old medicine. When we opened her chest, it became apparent that we had to uh, invent a, a type of operation that was classically used for patients with tuberculosis and perhaps uh, described some 60 to 80 years ago. Dr. Murthy and his team collapsed the lining of Danielle's chest onto her lung, trying to block those holes that had formed. After that, the medical team and her family could only wait. With a chest tube, there's a box that sits on the floor and there's a liquid in there, a blue liquid, and it goes up and down when it's working. I remember sitting there staring at it for weeks, making sure it wasn't moving because then we knew it was healing. I woke up, I was in a different state, in a different hospital. Um, what happened? Shortly after, Danielle was transferred back to Buffalo to recover. It was the first time this new mom had seen baby Fiona in two months. And it turns out while her mom was recovering, Fiona had taken some major steps herself. Joe was holding her and he set her down and she took off walking. That emotional moment caught on camera in the hospital lobby. Since then, a lot has changed for the Abraham family. They were beyond thankful Danielle's life had been saved, but there was something they were still hoping for. Another baby was something we always wanted. But after years of trying, the couple thought it wouldn't happen. We sold all of our oldest daughter's yeah, clothes, rid all, gave yeah. rid of everything, and last summer, surprise. Another healthy baby girl making their family complete. A second miracle in a lifetime, it just... Yeah. How do you explain that? Danielle and Joe have since taken their entire family back to the Cleveland Clinic. A small way to say thank you to the people who saved her life. Katie Morse, 7 Eyewitness News. Such a wonderful ending to such a trying yeah. stretch in that baby, my goodness. <laughs> oh my goodness, so glad that she's doing well. All of the whole family, what an amazing story. Great story, yeah. Okay.